my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and time for another book review. Today, I am going to be talking about the third book in the Lux series, which is called Opal by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So, I'm just going to jump right into the spoilers. So, if you have not gotten this far in the series yet, what are you doing watching this? Click away now and come back after you read the book. So, in the last book, holy crap, Dawson is back. And he's not like he was when he left. He has changed, which, you know, is to be expected with all the shit he had to go through. And they're trying to make things all nonchalant, like... Because the government's going to be watching them. And they got to seem as normal as possible so they don't seem suspicious. So that's what they're trying to do. Kate and Damon are now a thing. They have finally gotten together. I just got to say, I have some issues with their little communication thing. They want to both protect each other by throwing themselves on the line, but then they get pissy when the other does the same, and they know it's hypocritical, but they can't help feeling it anyway, which drives me crazy. It's like, if you don't want him or her throwing themselves on the line, don't do it yourself. Don't be stupid and be cautious, and just end the story. Dee is not really speaking to Kat right now because Adam died trying to protect her, and so Dee's bitter about that, and so D Kat lost, like, her BFF. Just, there's so much going on. And, holy crap, I just kind of know something kind of creepy about the cover of this book. <laughs> In the very, very corner, there's, like, a creepy face, and, holy crap, how did I not notice that before? Who is that creepy face? Oh my god. So Blake is brought back into this wonderful picture, and he is trying to ask Damon and everyone for help getting his Luxon buddy Chris broken out of the government facility that he's being held in. He can't do it alone and he's basically blackmailing everyone else into helping him. So far the government is not completely sure that Kate is mutated and bonded with Damon. But he's threatened to tell them about that if they do not help him. So that's not good and that's a really dick move to do, Blake. So they really don't have any other choice but to go along with it. So they go through all this trouble planning this awesome escape and they're planning to get Beth out of there too because she's there too. So you know kind of doing killing two birds with one stone there. But when they try to break in there they run into a little trouble. Apparently there's this Onyx, which it causes severe pain for Luxon and Luxon hybrids, isn't like it's sprayed on them, and so it's like agonizing pain, and they retreat, and they basically have to take time to think of a new plan, and that new plan is to try and build up a tolerance to Onyx, which Blake has to a point. Apparently, the government was like slowly exposing him and the other hybrids to Onyx so that they get some bit little immunity to it. So for the next few months everyone else is trying to build up this semi-immunity to Onyx by touching it for as long as they can stand and yeah that's their plan to try and get in now. It's the only plan they really got so they gotta go with it. So there's quite a bit of other things going on. We find out that an opal can really increase a Luxon or a hybrid's power and through a set of unfortunate circumstances, Damon and Kat manage to get a noble. I don't know how I feel about Will coming back, really. I felt the whole plot, the idea of Will coming back to try and get revenge was, I don't know, forced? It was nice to see what happened to Will, but it did seem really forced. Though I do like how we are, like, really shown that if one of a bonded pair dies, the other dies too. So if Kat died, Damon would have died. And I do like how Dee slowly starts to become more friendly with Kat after this happened. You know, it only took a near-death experience of losing her friend for them to make up. And I absolutely love Damon's romantic moments. I think it's really sweet. Doesn't make up for him being such a jackass most of the time, but he can be sweet, which is nice to see that he is not a total jackass. So, a few months after their first attempt to get Beth and Chris free, they try again after they've built up a slight immunity to Onyx. 
They can stand it for a little while now, but it still burns, it's still unpleasant, and after a while, they can't take it anymore. So, things are going good at first. They find Chris and Beth, and we find out what happened to Simon. Apparently, he was taken in by the government and forcibly mutated. Though, I do kind of wish they didn't kill him off right away, because it's like, okay, we find out what happens to him, and then you just kill him. Alright. That also seemed kind of forced. In that kind of case, I wouldn't have minded not knowing for sure, just to leave that little air of mystery. But, I don't know, I just felt that was, like, weird, like the will thing. And, yeah, apparently Blake is a dirty, backstabbing bastard, and I want to punch him in the face again. Like, holy crap, I hope Damon hunts his ass down and beats the shit out of him, or better yet, kills him. Because he apparently betrayed everyone else, and everyone gets out fine, thankfully. Between the Aurum and the lasers and the onyx, they get out, except for Kat. We end the book with her being trapped in the facility, surrounded by Aurum, and her just... Oh my god. So that's terrifying, and just holy crap. So other than a few minor things with Will and Simon and me wanting to punch Blake, I absolutely love this book and I love this series and I can't wait to read the fourth book, which I actually have on my shelf back here. So I'm really excited. Jennifer L. Armitard has really jumped up on my favorite authors list and just... I think she's an amazing author and I love her books and I'm definitely, after I finish this series, going to read some of her other books. So, that's really all I'm going to say with this book review, and I will see you guys next time. Keep reading, my fellow book addicts.